Hi, this is Jeff Spencer, Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our video lecture over section 10.1, which introduces the, the unit of chapter 10, geometry. Uh, in this section, we're going to look at points, lines, planes, and angles. Let me just go back real quick. Eventually, at the end of this uh, unit, we're going to basically do applications of uh, things that you would maybe do at your house with a landscaping project and figuring out the cost of that or fixing up certain things at your house and what would be the cost of painting or laying flooring. Sometimes we'll do applications where, with volume, where you might want to dig a dig a hole or something for a pool or or whatever, and uh, figure out those volumes. So that's eventually the applications that we're going to head to. So we're just going to go over the basics in this one. Um, we're going to understand points, lines, planes, and uh, angles, basically. So just some defining things here. Uh, a point is is just represented by a small dot. Just represents a location in space. Uh, and we use that to create, you know, uh, basically lines and planes and then uh, volumes to mark kind of corners of, of uh, the, the space. So, or like, you know, cities on a map or something like that. So a line is just, you know, when we connect two points and um, it has, it has we're, we're going to measure lines, well actually we're going to measure line segments like from A to B, the length of that, okay? And the application that we're going to do in the future is finding perimeters of certain things. Like if you want to put fence around a yard or something like that, we want to know the distance that we're going to have to, to uh, lay the fence. So distance is going to be a big thing with lines. And then um, when we make a two-dimensional space, uh, we call it a plane. Think of like the top of your table or a tabletop or like a piece of paper. And now it's in two dimensions. It has a length and a width, and it has a two-dimensional size. Um, we call that area. And so we're going to be finding a lot of areas. Like if you want to carpet your room and you need to figure out the area that you need to cover or something like that. So those are the things we're going to do. Some important conversions. I have this slide if you want to write this stuff down if you need it. Uh, the U.S. system, uh, you got to remember that 12 inches is one foot. Three feet makes a yard. And 5,280 feet make a mile. These are our common conversions and common distances that we use are measures of distance. Inches, feet, yards, and miles. Metric uh, uses millimeters, meters, sorry, millimeters, centimeters, meters, and kilometers. So 10 millimeters, a millimeter is really small. It makes one centimeter. One centimeter is like, uh, like the last digit of your pinky, if you think of approximately. So a small distance. 100 centimeters makes one meter. Centi, the prefix for centi means 100. It's a Latin prefix. So it's 100 centimeters make one meter. And a meter is like a little longer than a yard. It's like 3.1 or 2 yards. So it's pretty close to a yard. And then 1,000 meters makes one kilometer. And um, kilo is the Latin prefix for 1,000. So 1,000 meters makes a kilometer. So if you ever travel to Nearly, a, nearly every other country uses these lengths as distance, mainly kilometers when you're out on the road, like how far you are from a town or something. So I'm just going to go over some basic conversions here with inches and feet, and it's the same way with y yards. It's just a matter of dividing by 12 or multiplying by 12 for inches to feet. So 30 inches, if you needed to convert that to feet, this could be a common thing that you'll do in this, in this chapter. If you have 30 inches, you need to convert that to feet. Well, you know 12 inches is one foot, so a lot of students get confused. Should I divide by 12 or multiply by 12? The answer is you need to divide by 12, because if you think about it, 30 inches, if you divide that by 12 and you get two and a half feet, that makes sense, because you have the 12 inches and then another 12 inches, which is to a total of 24 inches, that's the two feet, and then another half foot, six inches on top. So that makes sense. If you took 30 inches and multiplied by 12, if you took 30 inches, let me do that real quick, if you did 30 times 12, you get 360. So do you think 30 inches is 360 feet? That doesn't make any sense at all because 30 inches are small, you know, and that doesn't make 360 feet, which is really long distance. So if you're nervous, just do them both and see which one makes sense. Um, but these conversions are pretty common. So then the other thing, if you need to convert feet to inches, then you multiply by 12. So 18 feet, uh, if you take 18 times 12, you get 216 inches. So that's how those, <coughs> me, those conversions work. Um, angles, so we're, we're going to talk about some real basic stuff with angles, just mainly in triangles. 
Um, but just so you know, uh, an angle is really just kind of the size between uh, two rays or lines. Uh, it's measured here, uh, this little kind of, uh, it's not really a distance, but it's really like the gap between these two, these two lines, okay? So we have an angle, and the angle is really this labeled by this number one. And angles are measured by the amount of rotation. Um, angles are measured in degrees, symbolized by this. So there are 360 degrees in a full rotation. So if you make a circle, that's 360 degrees. Um, if you think of like the coordinate plane and the XY plane, when we were doing graphing from the last unit, uh, each, each uh, perpendicular part of it is 90 degrees. So if you go from the X to the Y, the first rotation is 90 degrees, and four 90 degree angles make up 360 which is a full rotation. Um, so for example, you know, if, if an hour clock moves from 12 to 2, or sorry, a minute clock or an hour, doesn't matter, uh, moves from 12 to 2, what is this angle? Well, full rotation is 60 degrees, and it's moved 2 out of the 12 parts of this circle. So if you take 2 divided by 12, reduce that to 1 6, and multiply that by 360, it's 60 degrees. So this would be a 60 degree angle. Um, and then we have names for angles. This is just good, good to kind of know. Keep that in mind, especially right angle, because we'll refer to um, right angles. We'll, re we'll refer, excuse me, to right triangles using the Pythagorean theorem. An angle less than ninety we call acute. An angle that's exactly ninety we call right angle. You'll see this notation with this little box here. And an angle greater than uh, a ninety but less than um, one hundred and eighty is called obtuse. And a straight angle is uh, a, just a line, 180 degrees. But usually we use these three terms, especially right angle. So that's it. Just an intro. We're going to get into more details uh, with perimeters, lengths, triangles, angles, and areas coming up here in the next few sections. See you then.